Welcome to another episode of Opal Power. In this episode, we're going to be installing this little electric fuel pump. This is a question that comes up on the Opal form uh, pretty much every year, someone asking how to install an electric fuel pump on their car. Good. Uh, so where I like to install them is right about here. You can see this little tie-down bracket where they would uh, tie down the Opal GT um, when it was being shipped to the US. Um, so I like to put my electric fuel pump pretty much right behind that. And uh, you'll see more about that in a second. Now the electric fuel pump I'm choosing is a uh, Carter P60504. Uh, that's the part number. Uh, it delivers, I think, three PSI, which is, um, you don't want anything more than three PSI for a Weber carburetor. So you can use a different fuel pump for this. Just um, just make sure that you're below three PSI or you'll need a, a external regulator to um, make sure you don't flood your carburetor. All right, so we'll get to it now. All right, so here's what comes with this particular kit. You get the uh, hold down bracket with some rubber coating for anti-vibration. Uh, you get one connector. I don't under, well, no, actually you get two, Never mind. So you get two uh, bayonet connectors, uh, two clamps, a ring connector, that'll be for the ground. You get a washer and you get one bolt. I think, uh, I think mine's missing another bolt. You can see this one has a, um, a groove in it and this uh, makes it self tapping. So as long as you drill the hole pretty much the right size, this thing will cut the rest of its way through. Um, but they didn't give me another one, so I grabbed me a self-tapping um, screw, and I'll do this for the top uh, mount portion. So first thing we're going to do, this uh, bracket goes on this like this. So I have some little Kevlar um, hose wrap right there, and then I uh, use some really large heat shrink on the ends Kind of hold it on it doesn't look great but it will help with some vibration um, and sound problems so what i'm going to do now is try and get an area where i like where it fits so i'm just kind of maneuvering the pump around a little bit with the bracket and i want to find a spot where i can mount both um both screws and also have the pump very tightly mounted so i'm going to mark my top bolt because it's gonna be the hardest one to drill. And I'm gonna do it first and get it bolted in. And then, so let me get me a pin. So there's the self-tapping. And I'm going to get my drill and try and thread it in all the way up here. So I've got the first self-tapping screw um, started in there. I'm not gonna tighten it all the way yet. And you can see this bracket has a little slot to it so you can adjust up and down a, a little bit of amount there. And we're gonna need that later. So now I'm going to put the pump back in there. Remember, this side faces out. Oh, and actually we can see the plus and minus sign on here now. So we're gonna mount it this way because I want my plus sign to be on the inside so I can route it kind of along the fuel line type thing. And the negative, I want to go up to the frame really closely but that doesn't really matter that much just be sure you know which one is which when you put your pump in you don't want to wire it backwards and pump fuel into your tank if that's how that, that would work all right so it's mounted you can see it's i didn't get it the, the strap perfectly even which is annoying me but that's okay but uh, you can see where i put the giant heat shrink here uh this is plum like plumbing heat shrink and then over the, my little Kevlar cover that I put on it. It'll just help a little bit with noise because see, there's nothing, no metal touching metal on here whatsoever. It's, um, everything's isolated with rubber. You can see we have our fuel filter here and we're going to have to, I mean, it's really hard to show this under here. And we're going to have to connect it to the uh, factory metal line right here. So I'll probably cut this right here and then put a little, little rubber add on here. And then I left enough slack whenever I um, replaced my uh, plastic fuel line to where I should be able to just route it over to here with a, without any extra line. It'd be good to go. All right, so I'm going to try and cut this metal brake line now and then 
If I do manage to cut through it all the way, it's going to spew fuel everywhere, so I'm going to try and, um, and get the uh, hose on it as quickly as possible. So we'll see, we'll see how this goes. So let me make sure that I, my hose is long enough for where I'm cutting, and it is. So let's, let's continue cutting. Just using a little mini tubing cutter. Yep, there we go. All right, quickly. There we go. I only lost like half a gallon. <laughs> Whew. So we got the hose on, no obvious leaks. Of course, we'll recheck everything in a minute. There's that hose. I'll need to get a little bracket over here to secure that closer to the body because that ain't gonna do. Other than that, the fuel wiring is all done except for we have to delete the old fuel pump now. All right, so we're under the car. You can see my fuel pump is leaking like a sieve, the uh, the old mechanical one. And that's the reason I'm putting an electric pump in here. Well, not the only reason, but the main reason. So there's uh, two 13 millimeter bolts on this that are, I think the upper one's quite tough to get to if I remember. It's been a long time since I've dealt with one of these fuel pumps. Now, when you take this off, uh, there are, will probably be some oil that comes out that's normal but it's not going to it shouldn't pour out if i'm remembering right but i guess we'll find out here in a second okay so there's one Let's see if we can get this upper one somehow yeah there we go Yay. All right, so fuel pump is out, except for the fuel lines that are still holding it on. And God dang, I used way too long of a bolt there whenever I put that on. There's also a spacer in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel. I'm gonna have to get a screwdriver to peel that off. All right, so our old leaky fuel pump is off. And I already got the spacer off the fuel pump uh, to timing cover area. So now we need to get our block off plate. And open that up. This is from Opal GT Source, but you could easily make one yourself out of some aluminum. That's all this is. Had to make me a quick and dirty little block off plate. Uh, Opal GT Source accidentally sent me a spacer instead of the plate I was needing. So, um, but it looks like I got it. I used a gasket and some cut it out on the grinder and got it fairly close so it should be good uh, so we're just going to put gasket sealant on this on this gasket and go bolt it up to the um to the engine okay so i got my block off plate on up there you can see that so that's good to go uh, so we'll just have to check it for leaks after we get the car turned on so now we're going to move on to wiring there's several different ways to wire this the car I'm doing today uh, has a universal wiring harness in it that I installed. This one's just an eight circuit little universal wiring kit. Uh, so when I, when I put this in, I left me a bunch of extra yellow wire back here. And that yellow wire is some marked electric fuel pump. So that's what I'm gonna be using to wire the positive for my electric fuel pump. Um, but with a stock GT, so if you can see this, this isn't my fuel pump, but if you can see this orange wire here, it's the third um, bank from the left. That there is a great place to put your electric fuel pump. Um, I think mine is wired to the other side of it. Let's see. 
yeah, see that big red wire? That's my electric fuel pump wire going out to the, um, through the firewall there and into the engine bay on this car. Okay, I've got my power wire run. Um, like I said a minute ago, you're gonna basically do this whatever makes you feel the most comfortable. On my red car, the, uh, you can't really, well, yeah, you can see it. The uh, positive that goes to my fuel pump, you can see it going down right there. So it comes out of my um, firewall, goes all the way under the car, under the transmission, through the transmission tunnel, and all the way back to here. You can see it back there. Same place I mounted it on the orange car. But on this one, I routed the, um, the positive wire all the way under the car. On this one, it's routed from my main fuse um, block under there, down the side, back, back into the uh, rear area the, where the gas tank is, comes all the way back to this uh, rear tail light, and then it goes down. If you take the tail light out, you can um, push it down into here. And you can see I drilled a tiny hole, just ex almost exactly the size of the wire right there. And I'm going to um, uh, put some seam sealer in there to seal it after I um, get it routed where I want it. So this is my positive. So it's gonna come under here, loop around and go over to here. And then uh, I've got my ground wire uh, got the ring terminal end of it prepared. Now you could uh, put your ground wire on the mounting, one of the mounting points you already uh, put, like uh, that one right there. You could do that, but um, sometimes you want to take your ground wire off to redo it later on, like after five or six years, and you probably don't want to take off your mounting bolts and have to get everything readjusted. So I'm going to place my grounding point probably right here or about right there. We'll see when I get the wire routed. That way I can have easy access to it if I wanna replace the wire on both ends of it. Okay, so you can see how the fuel pump is set up here. You're sitting on top of my rear axle right now, looking, looking towards the back of the car. Uh, so here's my positive fuel pump wire. I'm gonna cut it and put it onto the positive terminal, which is this one here. But Right there, should give me enough extra slack to deal with it, just barely. I'm using some uh, gold-plated bayonet connectors. That way they won't get corroded and if they get exposed to a little bit of road salt. Double crimp it. Okay, nice and tight. Now I'm gonna put some heat shrink on it. I use four to one heat shrink, so I don't have to um, put it on before I put it on my connector. I can put it on after. You can see this is about a uh, pretty large piece of uh, heat shrink here, and it'll slip over my bayonet connector. Take my heat gun. shrinks down no problem see that uh, that was way over a quarter of an inch and it's it slimmed down to below an eighth of an inch okay so let's get that on there perfect now we just need to make our ground okay so here's my self-tapping screw I'm going to Thread it in right about here, where I can hide most of it behind uh, that little tie-down thing. So let's take the self-tapping screw. There we go. And notice I use brown for all of my ground wires because that's what Opal did. Every single one of the grounds on the car is brown that I know of. Uh, and so I always do that too, so that whenever I'm inspecting things, I can say, oh, that's a ground wire. And um, not have to second guess my own wiring. 
Okay, so I'm gonna cut that here. Perfect. Rimp it. Heat shrink. Nice. Let's go test the, the pump. Uh, the way I have this wired right now, it should come on when I turn on the key. I'm going to add in an inertia switch in line and then maybe a kill switch too. Looks like we're good. Good, turns off with the key. So now I just need to add in a kill switch and an inertia switch. Um, the inertia switch is just a safety feature in case you get in an accident. Um, it, will, it will notice that sudden inertia and it'll shut off that fuel pump until you cycle the power. I don't have one on this car, I probably should, but um, I just have a kill switch on both of my cars right now that I can flip manually even with the key on. But that's just an added safety feature if you're into that. Um, you can get them on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description for the inertia switch. This is an inline switch, nothing hard to wire. Uh, but that pretty much concludes wiring up this electric fuel pump. Um, I think you guys can figure out how to um, put an inline switch. Um, I'm going to place mine in a hidden location so it can be also a theft deterrent. So I won't show you where, where I'm putting it, but uh, one place that a lot of people like to do is if, if you can get back here and access this, this parking light switch has no function on an American GT, so you could uh, make this be your fuel pump, pump switch if you so desire. Well, thanks for watching, and good luck. I wired in my secret kill switch, and so now everything is working great. There's kind of how everything looks. So my switch is off right now, so the pump doesn't come on. Now my secret switch is on, so the pump is on.